Join us and help us continue to support the many talented people of our community. Learn how to get your business highlighted on Lacrosse Local. Go to lacrosselocal.com and click on advertise. Prevention is the key to a healthy life. That's why Gunderson Health encourages you to learn about vaccines and how they can help you and your loved ones stay healthy. Vaccines protect against preventable diseases and viruses by boosting your body's defenses. Visit GundersonHealthFacts.com to learn more. We chatted with musician Luke Hendrickson. We talked about his early interest in music, the album A Place to Call Our Own, his process for recording and writing, new music, and an upcoming show at Alpine Inn. You can find more conversations, food reviews, live music, weekend picks, and events on our website, lacrosselocal.com. I'm Amy. And I'm Brent. And this is Lacrosse Local. Well, I'll never forget that day I ran for the shed. There I hid, but I just had to see if sweet Sarah made it, if she'd ran for the field or disappeared into the tree. My name is Luke Hendrickson. I was born in uh, Minnesota, Cannon Falls, actually. What led me to music? I grew up in a musical household with records everywhere. No other musicians, I guess I should say, but with music everywhere. I was taught to use the turntable at a very young age, so I've been turning records over since I could reach. So what were some of those earliest sort of records or influences they had that kind of sent you on your way? Well, I was at the mercy of what uh, what my mom was listening to, but it's all stuff that I really still enjoy. Back then, it would have been, you know, The Grateful Dead, Neil Young, Bonnie Raitt, old blues stuff, you know, Little Feet, stuff like that. I don't know. It was mm-hmm. it was it was a wide mix of stuff from the sixties, seventies. Mm-hmm. So is it something like has your has your musical taste always been in the kind of genre in some sense of what you do now, or were were you ever into rap music? <laughs> <laughs> that, no, that's so that's funny that you. I just came across. I was scrolling a little bit on Facebook before bed last night, and I came across this Tupac meme, and I thought, oh man, that reminds me of being sixteen. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, yeah, I dig all kinds of all kinds of stuff. I feel like my tastes have have broadened as I've gotten older, actually and not narrowed so yeah it just seems like you know i've talked to a number of people you know it seems like that everyone has an eclectic sort of sound of music but appreciation for various songs and artists but kind of going back to this you know stuff that you do which i would probably describe as in some ways some sort of alternative country i don't know what you kind of describe it as like for someone who doesn't know your music how do you do kind of describe where you're coming from with that sound yeah you know i've wrestled with that for a long time now because i I'm in the business of promoting myself and e- sending emails and describing myself, you know, people want. And uh, I've toyed around with different labels and it's hard. It's weird to label. So, yeah, I've kind of settled on folkish, alt, country, <laughs> you know, yeah. more or less. or some variation of that with ishes and ings <laughs> attached to it. Over the last couple of days, just kind of listening, you know, checking out your Bandcamp page. I see the latest being a, a place called Our Own. Is that your most latest piece that's out right now yes, on Bandcamp? Yep. Mm-hmm. What was the process like for recording, you know, and writing that? Is that, do you work quickly or is it something you take your time with or how, how did that album come along? I guess that one did actually come together quicker than I thought it would. That one's more or less, uh, I guess I kind of call it a concept album, concept E album. Miles of corn stalks standing way up high Taller than I was by mid-July and i just run So once I had the first couple songs written, it started to dawn on me that I kind of had some sort of direction going. And then it kind of became easier from there. And it was putting together the instrumental pieces. And there was a couple little little neat things that happened with that. Like I, uh, the song Homeland is a poem that a friend of mine wrote that caught my attention and I decided to try to put music to it. 
because I felt like it was it worked with this other story I was starting to write. And so little things like that just started to happen that my it just kind of pieced together very naturally. Checking out your discography on here as well, you know, it seems like you started hitting it pretty regularly. The Comfort Food EP in 2018, but around 2021, it seemed that you seemed to be at least knocking out more singles and stuff like that. Was this a COVID album in some sense, or did you give it time to write, or did that have any effect on your creative process? Yeah, the last one, The Place to Call Our Own, was definitely a, I guess, was a COVID album. My first album, the One Night at the Crystal Lounge, that was written over the course of years, really, before I knew I was going to do an album. But that finally came together and was recorded in the summer of 19, and then had a big album release show and put that out in February of 20, which, you know, in hindsight, was a pretty terrible time to put out a a record. (laughs) (laughs) And, uh, you know, I had a lot of supporting dates lined up for that, and that all canceled, and yada, yada, so... By the time, I don't know, probably a year went by or maybe not quite that long, but I realized I hadn't written anything in a long time. It was COVID. I'm just sitting around. I wasn't doing much. So yeah, yeah, the new record kind of did become a COVID project because it started out of a bit of, you know, of me trying to kick the butt of this writer's block that I had Mm. uh, due to COVID. So yeah, that one came about, was conceived, written, recorded, and all during a time when I still wasn't even sure if I'd be able to play shows on it or anything. It was just out of necessity for my mental health, I think. <laughs> I think for everybody's mental health in some sense. Yeah. Yeah. So on that album, you know, a place to call your own, is there is there any sort of highlights or some songs you like to play live or is there one that's really kind of near and dear to you? Well, they all kind of are because like I said, it kind of follows the follows a story, follows an arc. Most of it is special to me in that it's not one. Most of those songs are not songs that I would just play, say, at a normal bar gig or something like that, you know, if it's kind of noisy. And I don't mind doing those gigs. It's, it's really personal, you know, mm-hmm. album. And so sometimes if it's just not the right room, I, I probably won't play 1987 or Homeland or Chasing Ghosts or something because it takes a lot of energy sometimes to really give those songs the attention they need and so is there new music coming down the line? Are you excited for 2023 or are you just kind of get back into touring or what are you, what are you up to? Not that you yeah, were been, touring, but. Sure. No. Yeah. I've been, uh, well, 2022 was my busiest year ever. Awesome. With shows. So yeah, the last album came in, what, what was it? November of 21. So sometimes it feels like that was just three months ago, but shit, no, that was a year and three months ago. So shows are lining up. I'm not in the process of doing an album or anything right now. I've got tidbits of songs. I've got a little notebooks right over there on the table. I've been writing some stuff down on just this morning and uh, I'm not forcing that at all. Cause right now, you know, for better or worse, I'm just focused on playing gigs and making money for the family. So, uh, you know, making an album <laughs> it takes quite a bit of money, money and time. And, and uh, so that'll, that'll happen when it, when it does. So, you know, you're playing the Alpine Inn and lacrosse in April yeah. coming up. What can people expect from that show? Alpine Inn has just been exploding with original, you know, talent and music up on the bluff. So I'm just kind of wondering what could people expect from your show? Well, that's what I hear. And I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I've never been there. Uh, I'm not a stranger to lacrosse. Well, I'm excited because who uh, Tony is one I talked to and they seem to be very excited to have us there. So that makes things easier. My band is, you know, we've been firing on all cylinders. I'm not afraid to say. And, uh, it's just a, a lot of a lot of fun. My electric guitarist is is a phenom. You know he's incredible. Yeah. So he brings a lot of energy to these songs. You know people we get described as you know a country band, and in a lot of ways we are. But I think with the the background and the musical background that all my me and my band members have, it brings a different flavor to it. We'll have like you know country songs with maybe some van halen ish type of shredding okay. type of stuff on it you know and i kind of just let the guys go wild and i just think it's a lot of fun you know i think for people who have seen me solo a lot because that's how i play mostly a solo or duo it puts a different spin on the songs and it puts a different flavor on them and i'm just excited to present uh the band to a new venue well yeah i think it's gonna be fun too i mean alpine has been around for a while in different capacities but i mean you know over 100 years i believe also just has a nice kind of roadhouse quality to it, kind of overlooking the bluffs as well, though. 
as long as it's good weather, it's a nice drive up the bluff there, windy, and then you get to the top, and it's uh, it's a cool spot to watch live music, definitely. Awesome, awesome. Kind of a fun one. What are you listening to right now? I don't know if you have a CD player, but you know, do you listen like albums or listen to a Spotify list, or what do you listen to right this moment? Right this moment? Well, I can tell you, I listen to a lot. I've been, I've always been a metalhead, and that's kind of my main thing. So the last couple of years, that was another COVID project of mine was kind of reinvigorating that that love for for metal. And uh, I kind of was stuck listening to the same old things for a long time, all the Pantera and Megadeth and Iron Maiden <laughs> that, I, that I grew up listening to. But man, there's so much. God, what, what do I have on right now? It was some band called Inoculation. I've listened to Insomnium, Woods of Epre. I mean, a lot of black metal and death metal and <laughs> stuff like that. We actually connected with another band who's playing up, uh, coming up here, Dig Deep, who's, you know, a bluegrass oh. band. Yeah. Northern Wisconsin, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're also, you know, they said they're influences by by metal. Do you think there's any sort of correlation? <laughs> I have found. It's technically really, you know, in depth and crazy musically. Yeah. Well, there's definitely through lines with sort of the more extreme elements of metal and like the independent streaks in like bluegrass and folk country type of stuff like that. There's sort of that independent spirit. And I was just talking about this with somebody, you know, if you know, like Hank Williams, the third and stuff like that, like Hank three, you know, there were some people like that who bridged a lot of those gaps, you know, they would play country and sort of touch on metal and stuff in their sets you know, back 20 years ago. And it really sort of, I think, brought all the Mohawk kids and the leather jackets and all the cowboy hat people together. And they started to realize that there was a lot of common threads there in the attitude of the music and the how they'd sort of been pushed down by the more powerful, you know, record people and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm seeing there's a lot more in common in those mm-hmm. types of things than, than most people would think. For people who want to find out more about your music, you know, follow along. I'm sure you're on the, all the social medias. What's the best avenue for people to go to and check you out? Well, there's a few. You mentioned Bandcamp. Thank you for that. That's lukehendrickson.bandcamp.com. And that's got all, all my merchandise on there, all the t-shirts and the CDs and records. But you can also download the music there and listen to everything there. Facebook is probably where I'm the most active as far as posting my schedule and show updates and pictures and video and things like that. Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, all of those things. YouTube, there's some YouTube videos. Bands in Town is sort of yep. a comprehensive list of all my shows, which I'll link to that on my Facebook or Instagram sometimes. All the usual uh, places. All the usual things. Well, I mean, yeah. we're definitely pumped to check out the Alpine Inn this summer. I mean, it's they're going to be making announcements all summer. So I'm glad awesome. you're on a bill. And we'll be up there and come check you out. That sounds great, man. I, I really good to meet you in person. Lacrosse Local Podcast is a production of River Travel Media. Do you have an interview idea you'd like to share with us? Message us on Facebook at Lacrosse Local. Find out more about us at lacrosselocal.com. And you can subscribe to the Lacrosse Local Podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you like us, rate us five stars. We appreciate it.